Welcome back to another episode of The Political Life. Uh, We hope you all are doing well. Today, we are very excited to come to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. Unfortunately, I am not in Las Vegas, but our guest is, uh, I think, uh, he's from Las Vegas. I think he's in Las Vegas. He's shaking his head yes. Um, And uh, he is an independent investigative reporter um, and I recently saw a, uh, article that he did. Um, I think I saw it on NCSL, but, um, the website, but he can, he can tell us more and, um, about the gig economy. And so, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, glad to welcome, uh, Brian Joseph, Brian, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. So Brian, first, um, just tell uh, our listeners a little bit about uh, you and and how you earn. So you're an independent uh, reporter. Is that a tough way uh, to make a living or uh, you are part of the gig economy, which we're going to get into? I, I am absolutely part of the gig economy. Yes, I, I uh, um, it, it is a tough way to make a living. I am a, I'm essentially a freelance journalist. Um, I, I sort of fell into being a freelance journalist because I, I uh, began working on a book a few years ago and and finding the time to, to work on a book uh, required me to sort of juggle my schedule. And uh, I, so I've, I work on my book and then I, uh, um, you know, fill in and support my family by, uh, by freelancing uh, journalism pieces. And then how many pieces uh, will you put out, say, in a, a week or a month or something? It really it depends on how busy I am with the book. It depends on, you know, w- what assignments I'm able to snag that are coming my way. It could be anywhere from, you know, you know three or four to, to one. It just really, really depends on the, uh, you know, the, the day or the week. And how many different entities um, reach out to you on a regular basis to do some work? <laughs> Man, that, that, that also really, uh, really varies a, a lot. I have two, um, two niche publications that I, uh, um, I work for pretty consistently. Uh, beyond that, it's, it's sort of catch as catch can. Okay. And do they pay you per article or per assignment? Yes, per, per article, for the most part. Okay. Um, wow. Well, that's, um, uh, that is, you are, um, you are definitely part um, of the gig economy. And did I see, um, where did I see your article, State Lawmakers Taking More Interest in Portable Benefits for gig economy workers. Well, I think you did probably see it on uh, on the NCSL page. Uh, it was originally published uh, for one of the, the main organizations that I, uh, one of the main niche publications that I write for, uh, uh, StateNet Capital Journal, which is a, a, a publication of LexisNexis. Uh, they have a, a, a content sharing agreement with uh, NCSL. Okay, great, sure. Um, so, um, uh, um, so about, um, uh, and f- well, first of all, let's get uh, let's talk about you a little bit more. Um, what is your book about? Uh, that's a good question. I can't can't say too much about it. It's a true crime uh, nonfiction book about a, a marginalized community. Okay. And when do you hope to have it completed by? Uh, that should be coming out uh, next year. Wow. Okay. Um, great. Uh, well, when the book comes out. Can we can include us on your book tour, Brian? I, we I want... certainly will. I certainly will. <laughs> My publisher will be happy to hear that. All right. Um, all right. So um, in, in your uh, in the article, you talk about 36 um, percent. There, there is a study by I think you said McKinsey where about 36 percent of American workers identify themselves as independent contractors. And so clearly. Uh, that's, you know, a third of U.S. workers would clearly be interested in and uh, benefit from portable benefits, right? Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, it's, um, you know, it's funny you, you identifying me as a gig, a gig worker. Yeah. I mean, it was, that was, that was a shocking number to me. I didn't realize there were so many people that, uh, you know, were struggling like I am. Yeah. And so where, um, um, so, so, it's it's uh, currently um, in about eight or nine states. They have passed legislations uh, legislation uh, in regards to board, portable benefits. What does that legislation do? Well, I'm not I'm not aware that that, that it's been passed anywhere. I, I'm I'm aware that it's been looked at. I, I don't I don't believe that. Okay, it's actually, it's so if they pass, 
So in, in like the state of California, where they, I think they had a ballot measure, which I think has been challenged in court. But yeah, and, and, were, and, has been, and has been ruled uh, unconstitutional. I think it's gone. Yeah. Okay. And so in California, there's been uh, no progress made in that regard. That's correct. Yes. And what did the constitutional amendment, if it was ruled constitutional, what would it have done? Uh, it, it, as I understand it, I mean, you know, the difficulty whenever you're talking about, you know, legislation, statewide legislation on, you know, on a national level, you know, there's only so deep you can get into each, each uh, piece of legislation. But as I understand it, it would have authorized gig economy companies to offer app-based drivers some limited benefits like accidents insurance, that sort of thing. But the, uh, but back in, uh, in August of 21, a California judge ruled portions of the initiative unconstitutional, and then the whole measure is, is thus un unenforceable. Um, and so if, so if um, um, uh, independent contractors were uh, able to get portable benefits, they could, they, it's an easier way for them to change jobs. They don't have to stay stuck in one job. They're, in the ideal world, their, their health care would be you know, quote, portable and, and other types of things. Is that correct? Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, the, the gig economy has, has, a, um, has really uh, brought to the forefront an issue that we've seen for a long time in, well, in workers, and that's the concept of job lock, where, you know, you can't leave a job because you, you're, you're sort of stuck to the benefits. Well, I mean, the gig economy with, with no benefits attached to them, you know, traditionally, has really, uh, um, you know, th thrown up this uh, or, or sort of blown up this idea of, of job lock. And, uh, um, but on the other hand, you know, we've also got, as you mentioned, you know, over a third of workers or, or, or basically a third of workers that, uh, um, don't have, you know, the, the stable benefits that, you know, that other, uh, uh, employees enjoy. And so, you know, law, lawmakers and policymakers are, are wrestling with how do we, uh, you know, address, you know, this sizable population of workers and how do we ensure that they get the, the sort of benefits that they deserve. And so, um, so you had mentioned, so Utah has passed something. Is that what you said? Oh, uh, gosh. You're, you're, maybe you're I said that in your article. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're challenging me here. I, I believe they looked at some stuff. Let me see here. Okay. Um, uh, they've, they've introduced some legislation. I don't know that they've passed anything. Okay. Oh, no, okay. They, no I, I take that back. They did, they did, they did enact a bill which, which allows uh, government entities and private businesses to offer portable benefits. So they've sort of opened the door for it. But, they, you know, whether, whether that's actually going to happen or not still, I, I believe, remains to be seen. And can you just give us an example of, again, how, let's say I'm driving for um, Uber and I'm living in Utah. Um, so how would uh, portable benefits um, just, you know, how would it basically work? What's the idea behind it? Well, the, the idea is, is that you would, um, you would be able to uh, obtain benefits through some sort of uh, platform. Uh, you know, it could be a marketplace. Uh, you know, some of that, some of the details of this are, or, or remain a little fuzzy, but basically, you know, you would you would be able to have some some basic benefits, you know, some, some healthcare, you know, maybe some uh, um, workplace you know, workman's comp uh, type benefits, and those benefits would be able to follow you uh, depending on uh, um, you know if you drive for Lyft or you drive for Uber, you know, maybe you you go to you know go to DoorDash or something like that. You know, those are, those benefits would follow you while you move amongst the uh, the various gigs in the gig economy. And is the uh, are the employers participating um, in this platform? Is that um, uh, so? Th there's different models. There's different models of all of this. I, I, I believe, uh, um, you know, I, again, it's hard to hard to know exactly how. Uh, um, regarding the Utah legislation, it it allows government entities and private businesses to offer portable benefits. So in that case, they would be involved in it. Now there are other models where maybe the employers wouldn't be involved in it. It really you know, one of the um, the difficulties around this issue is that there isn't a lot of uh, um, uh, consensus about how this should be handled at this point. So there's there's still a lot of uh, um, sort of uh, uh, up in the air discussions about you know what's the best policy, what's the best way to handle this. And and in fact, uh, I believe it was NCSL um, you know has, has put out some, some some general guidelines about how this should be handled because people are looking for a, a direction on how to address portable benefits. Yeah, and then it, and it you know and there's obviously the issue of um, who's paying for it and how it's being paid and um, uh, and all that. So um, and what um, um, so where um, has there been any opposition 
to it when it begins. I mean, I know in California, I can't remember the groups fighting it, um, post portable, portable benefits. Well, I mean, of course there's going to be opposition. I mean, whenever you're talking about a, a you know, a radical change to, you know, a, 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 a system that we have, uh, in, in business and in government, uh, you know, there, there are definitely entrenched interests that don't want to see things change. So yes, right. I mean, obviously there are going to definitely be, you know, some opposition to it, However, given the fact that there's, you know, we've just seen this explosion in, in the gig economy, uh, and and in you know people, you know, sort of self-labeling as independent contractors, um, you know, while there is opposition, I mean, I think there's growing momentum for uh, you know, for something like this to happen, uh, just because there's so many workers that are impacted by it. Well, and you would think it's got to be great for the economy if if people can move jobs and and not worry about benefits. Um, I think you you can make the argument people are going to be taking a lot more risk and um, a lot more entrepreneurial spirit. Um, you know, uh, trying different things. Uh, I'm sure what keeps people locked in jobs is benefits, healthcare, security. It, it, it absolutely does. I mean, I, I I it would be a game changer for me. I mean, it was it's been very difficult uh, working as a as an independent contractor myself, uh, you know, to get, to get, uh, um, you know, benefits for my, my, my wife and daughter. And, and it's, uh, it's been, it's been challenging. So, yeah, I mean, if I, I, I personally, <laughs> you know, selfishly would love to see this sort yeah. of thing happen. Um, yeah. but, but, you know, it, uh, you know, all that remains to be seen. Yeah. Well, you are part of the, uh, the new economy. What, um, well, it was a very, uh, very interesting article. I would encourage people to go to NCSL, uh, to the website, their new section, and you can check it out. I'm pulling it up right now and, uh, looking at a nice graph of the United States, uh, and, uh, see Washington, California, Utah, Alabama, Georgia, New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Connecticut. So yeah, uh, lots going on. Um, and then, um, uh, Brian, what else? Uh, what else have you? Uh, what else are you working on now, as far as articles, not your book? <laughs> I, I've got a I've got a bunch of stuff uh, in yeah. the hopper. I, I do some uh, do some writing um, for another publication uh, out in uh, in Sacramento, California, about the state capital out there. Got a got a, a piece I'm working on about. Uh, um, uh, tribal governments and their uh, disconnect uh, with uh, the rest of uh, California and how they're not getting uh, the uh, uh, access to you know, basic uh, government databases, uh, you know, like public health or, or public safety issues. Um, so I'm finishing that up. Uh, got a few few other things that are still still to be determined that I'm sort of p- picking away at. Uh, but yeah, uh, I've always uh, I've always got uh, you know two or three or four different things I'm working on. I, I'm, I'm probably going to be getting a little bit more into to writing about. Uh, um, the casino industry, just because I'm in Vegas, and, and there's a there's a lot of uh, opportunities in that regard for for freelancing. So I'll probably probably be doing a little bit more about that as well. And how long have you been freelancing? Uh, about four years now. And would you recommend it? Absolutely not. <laughs> there was no hesitation in that. No, no, it's it's it'd, it'd it's, nice it's, a, it's, a, have, it's a challenging. It'd be nice lifestyle. to have a steady gig. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I, 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 you know, circumstances put me in the situation where I'm, uh, um, like I said, I'm working on a book, and, and that's, you know, you got to do what you got to do to make things happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it can be very, uh, it can be very stressful, and uh, um, you know, I, uh, it, it, you know, the uncertainty of, of, of this lifestyle definitely inflames my uh, my anxieties from time to time. Yeah, and so when the book is done. Um... Do you will you stay being a freelancer? Well, at that, what what are your what are your thoughts? We'll, we'll see. That? Assuming I mean, we'll, if, the we'll book, see. If, if the book is a success, it may change things. Who knows? I mean, it's it's I I I, I don't know. Uh, um, you know, the, the the world is a funny place these days, and uh, it's hard to know where, where things are going and what's going to happen. And so, I'm just yeah. going to wait and see. I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm really just you know trying to trying to get through this this chapter of my life and see what happens next. And uh, you don't you 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 seem to write on a wide variety of topics. Uh, so you don't have one area that you focus on. You just you're an investigative reporter, and you get a topic or an issue, and you dive in and write about it, and move on to the next. I'd say that's correct. Yeah, I mean, my my heart is is with uh, marginalized communities and 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 people that are are sort of you know left behind by a. Uh, um, uh, by society or by by, by policymakers, um, but that's not um, 
you know, that's not steady work, right? I mean, those, those tend to be very long, you know, like a book, you know, long projects that, uh, uh, you know, I do because they, they're meaningful. And so oftentimes I have to, to fill in, uh, you know, with other work that's, uh, that's not quite where my heart is, but, you know, but pays the bills. And, and so, uh, you know, I have a lot of experience having, you know, covered uh, the state capitol in California for a number of years. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I can jump in and do policy stories uh, when necessary. And that, uh, like I said, that helps pay the bills. And were you based in Sacramento, or did you do? I that was, before? yeah, I was. I was based in Sacramento for for about nine years. I was the uh, Sacramento bureau chief for the Orange County Register for for quite a while. Oh wow, wow, yeah. But uh, that that must have been a uh, uh, that's a big job. That must have been a uh, interesting uh, um, uh, experience doing that for uh, almost ten years. It was it was quite interesting. Spent a lot of time with Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was the governor. It was a uh, it was a very you know very surreal experience. Did you ever spend any time in his smoking tent? I did not spend time in a smoking tent, but I, I did. Uh, I did receive a, a couple of the cigars that you know were hand rolled to Governor Schwarzenegger. That's great. And do you? Uh, uh, and what sent you from Sacramento to Las Vegas? I had an opportunity to do some work out here, and then that would that's what brought us out here. All right. Uh, well, Brian, it's been great having you on. Uh, again, I encourage people to check out the article at NCSL's website. Uh, and you'll have to reach back out when your uh, book comes back out. And for our listeners out there, remember you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and sign up for our email at politicallife.net. And uh, Brian, good luck with the book, and uh, we will see you soon. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Great having you. <laughs>